Welcome to my tutorial on spinning firewall. Firstly, am I serious? Yes. Gloves. Thick welder's gloves, preferably black. Fire extinguisher. Check the ground around you. Is anything going to catch fire? Make sure your head's covered. Make sure you're wearing glasses. Three layers of clothing. Wear black so you don't peer in the picture. White shoes, not such a good idea. But you get the idea. Wear black. Cover up. Make sure around you, nothing's going to catch fire. Hang around afterwards, make sure nothing has caught fire. Wait for a good half an hour. Make sure you've got water with you as well as a fire extinguisher. This is serious. I'm not looking for this to be a Steven Spielberg or a fantastic video. The audio is probably going to be crap. But I'm here to tell you how to spin firewall. This is from experience. This is from burning myself. This is from setting some fires by accident. Make sure you're in a very dry spot outside the fire danger season, not in the fire danger season. Maybe a good piece of road is good to do it on, maybe a river, somewhere you've got water. What do you need? Well, if you've seen my tutorial on my blog, all you need really is some fine steel wool, preferably 0000, or maybe something a little bit thicker. You pull it off in tufts, and you put it in your little spinning cage. Some people use an egg beater, and they put it inside there, and they spin it around in that, but I'm using a cage Here's a cage as per what's on my page. Now this cage has got a little lid and you put your firewall inside and as you spin it, it pulls tight purely because of gravity. I've got a little tiny piece of pipe to hold it in and a little clip on the end so I can clip it to my belt and pull it through. And basically the idea is you fill it up with your wool, you pull out your lighter, you set fire to it and it starts to smolder. As it's smouldering, you start to spin it. And as you're spinning it, more and more air gets through it and it starts to burn faster and faster until it catches fire. As it melts the metal, bits fly off everywhere. And of course that creates what we know as the firewall spinning. Now with this, I've actually got it so that I can actually pull it as well and release it back out as I go. So as I'm spinning it, I can make my circles smaller and I can make them bigger. You want to make sure you don't bang the ground because your little cage won't survive and you want to make sure any shards that fall off don't remain on you very long because they'll burn through to your skin through three layers of clothing really quickly. This is dangerous. For the details on how to create this, you can look on my blog which will be in the link below. I've made this out of some old chicken wire, an old brake cable actually out of a bike, a piece of pipe and an old clip I found lying around the house. So there you go, that's all you need. Now obviously to add drama, you do it somewhere where there's some structure of some kind and you make the picture interesting. Nothing's more boring than seeing the same firewall spinning technique over and over again. Thanks for looking, don't burn yourself. Remember the cautions. For the second part of my tutorial, how to light paint a light orb. Now, if you've seen on my website, I basically have a yogurt container with batteries in it some audio cable and LEDs at the end. So this is the finished product. Little yogurt container, the switch on the end, which I can turn the light on and off. And as you can see, some holes cut in it, so I can slide my belt through and put this on my side. There's the nine volt batteries inside, and there at the end of my LEDs. Now what I do is I find a pitch black dark place. I get something like a 20 cent piece or a rock. I put it on the ground and start spinning. So this is attached to my side and basically I'm just spinning it like that. Now that creates, that creates a 360 degree circle but the thing is it doesn't create an orb. So what I have to do now is very carefully make sure that this hand's motion is not out of kilter. So I'm not doing this otherwise I'll just get a whole heap of circles and I've got to make sure that that little tiny thing I've put on the ground I've marked it with that I look at it and shuffle my feet around it. So I shuffle, shuffle, shuffle until I've done an orb. Now, because I'm moving all the time, I don't expose in the photo, but the orb does. Basically, you keep yourself out of the frame while wearing black as much as possible, and you spin the orb around yourself, basically. And that's basically it. So if you have a look on the website, you'll see all the bits I used to create this. This is what I'm calling my orb, I think, version two maybe version one. It's a very basic orb, not very reliable. 
So you heard me say in my last tutorial that that orb wasn't that great. Well, that made me create my orb creator number three, which is made out of some fly screen edging and bits and pieces like nails and all sorts of bits and bobs around the shed. So this is what I call my walking stick. It's a basically a piece of fly screen frame that I've bent. I've then drilled a hole through it and got some washers on there. And at the other end, I've got a big pointy nail sticking out so I can stick it in the ground. And a cork on the end so I don't hurt myself. I'm prone to hurting myself. Now, what am I missing? I'm missing the bit that swings. What I've got here is the bit that swings. What I have is some little Teflon circles that I've drilled through so that this thing moves easily. I've got some 9 volt batteries and a switch at one end. And I've got three 6 volt little LEDs at the other end and some fishing weights. So I put this together like so. Put the nut on the end so it can't come apart. And I have myself my next little tool. As I said before, I spike this in the ground and as you can see I can spin it. Now because I can spin this and because I can rotate it very easily I can make an orb that's quite accurate and because the distance from the centerpiece to the ends is always the same the circle is not going to wobble. The circle is going to look a lot better. So I've just made sure there's nothing on the inside track here that's going to catch when it spins and I've just made sure that the LEDs are out of my way and that the switch is easy to grab. So I can turn it on nice and simple and spin it through 360. Then if I want to do multiple orbs I have an extra long exposure. I stop doing that orb, walk off to the next spot, start my next orb. Walk off to my next spot, do my third orb, whatever you want to do. So that's really it. All it is is some fly screen edges and some bits and pieces bolt through the middle here, some nuts on there, some teflon so it will go around nice and easily. I've just cable tied some batteries to the pole, some 100 mile an hour of cloth tape, black tape just to cover up the shiny bits and that's it. My orb number three.